course learning objectives. What I'd like to do is kind of, this is going to help you, I hope, kind of unravel a little bit more about what this is all about and how it's going to happen and, and hoping to, to pull in so you can see how your knowledge and the skills that you're building are going to fit into different assignments across the term. So I'm hoping all of that will happen. Um, and also, I'll give you some examples of, of actual exam questions that will um, test knowledge in different areas, okay? My goal here is to give you the picture. I don't really want to surprise you too much along the way. All right, and this is literally like verbatim from the syllabus. So by all means, I'm going to ask you to read the syllabus from beginning to end later, but here's just the big picture. All right, so given this thing that I'm going to be talking about called the external brain chapters. Okay, now some people, it took them the whole term and they never figured out what the heck I meant by an external brain. So personally, a, a, a few years ago, I had a, a computer that couldn't hold all the information that it needed. And so what did I get for it? I got an external hard drive, right? Because the, the memory within that computer wasn't sufficient. So I got an external hard drive for my computer. And so I got to thinking, wouldn't it be nice if my brain didn't have to have all of the information that they ever needed, right? And so I wanted to make an external hard drive for my brain. So I'm going to call that your external brain, okay? Like your external hard drive. Which, and what that means is that the, the information you gather in there, you, some of it you'll become familiar with and you'll need to use without looking at it. But sometimes, in order to answer questions, you're going to need to look at it. You're going to need to use your external brain in order to answer clinical questions. And you'll literally get that opportunity. So your goal as you're creating, kind of like when I have my external hard drive, I can set up my files however I want, right? And if you and I both had an external hard drive, you looked at them, they'd look really different because mine would be organized this way and yours that way. So it's going to be the same for this external brain. So I'm going to give you the chapter outlines. And you go online today, and if you haven't yet, and look at what that means. But I'm going to give you an outline that says, here's the content that you're going to need to know. Right? You're going to need to understand um, what are the different planes of the body? What are the different movements that a joint can go through? This kind of basic didactic information. I'm going to tell you what it is and say, now go find that information and organize it however you like. Okay? That's your external brain. I'll give you the guidelines, and then you can create it. You can use um, illustrations, charts. You can use stories. You can use anything you want. It should match your style. Okay? That's what's important. Um, and we'll try to help you uncover more about your style as we go. Um, for example, like I mentioned, tables and charts, hand-drawn illustrations. Like some of you can do that, and it's amazing. I personally cannot do that. Okay, I would have a lot of stick diagrams, and it wouldn't be so fantastic. Others of you have amazing artistic skills. So use what you've got, right? Use your skills and talents. Um, you can copy pictures from the web. You just have to label them. So you can't just take someone's picture that's already labeled and put it in there because you didn't, that doesn't take a lot of thinking. I can cut and paste really easily without thought. But if you have to look at it and then label it, now you are engaged with it, and now it'll be helpful to you. Okay? So you can do that. Um, you can put in personal mnemonics, whatever you like. Um, if you want more information about this, and many people do, after class today, um, Debbie and um, also uh, Jill and Melanie at the back are going to come and, and help us out afterwards and share what did they do last year, what did their external brains look like. So for those of you that feel like this is really intangible, They'll be here both today and Thursday after class to show you theirs and kind of give you some insights that they gained. All right. So learning objective number two. It is that you will be able to recall the name, location, and function of the anatomical structures that are in your external brain. Okay? So not everything is going to be something you'll reference. Some things you're going to become familiar enough with that you can just, you'll just know them because you'll be using them enough. Okay? So, and that will probably be on closed book right? Closed book exams that are multiple choice and short answer. Okay? So the focus of those kind of questions will be the name, location, and function of anatomical structures and kind of the basics. All right. Let's give you an example. This is an exam question. All right? Maybe not on this year's exam, but it's an exam question nonetheless. So which of the following joints can produce abduction and adduction? These are things I promise you will learn. Um, and then here's a list of joints. And that none of the above, it shows up a lot. On, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm all about using all of, none of the above, so just to be aware, some people's previous instructors don't like that one. Um, anyway, so this is just like an exam question. You'd look through, take a look at the different answers, and make a choice. Okay? So it's pretty basic, didactic. Um, this is talking about what can they do. So it's their function. So name, location, function. That's the basic gist of that closed book exam experience. All right? 
So you will also, during closed book, here's some more detail. So in the closed book sections, again, multiple choice or short answer, I think we'll have a little bit of both. You're gonna learn about the body movements and the planes that they occur in. Okay, so how does the shoulder move and in which plane does it move in? Um, we're gonna talk about the geographical relationship between <laughs> structures, meaning if you know where um, a certain bone in the face is, do you know where the other bone is in comparison to it? Is it superior to it? Is it inferior to it? Where, where is it located? So you're gonna have to understand not just the anatomy in a bubble, but how does it relate to one another, all right? Um, mechanisms and terminology of bone growth, okay? So just the basics of how do our bones end up the way they are. Um, classification of different structures. So we're gonna talk about the type of joint, the type of bone, type of muscle. All of these things have a classification system, okay? So you'll be familiar with those classification systems. Um, when it comes to muscle attachment sites, um, we're gonna focus mostly on the direction of the fibers. All our muscles have a fiber direction, and it matters because it affects their function. Muscles can only do one thing, they can shorten, and they can only shorten along the muscle fibers. So that's gonna be a real focus for you in the lab to notice and look at, this, at the structures, whether you're looking at it at a cadaver or looking at it in a chart or a model, be noticing that. And we'll talk a little bit about muscle attachment sites as it affects their action. You're not gonna memorize every single muscle origin insertion. We're not gonna do that, but certain ones that make sense and are grouped together, I'll ask you to be able to come up with those. We'll also talk a little bit about the peripheral circulatory system. So what arteries and veins do we find in the arms and the legs? So just a little bit of that. And then some basic anatomy with the cross-sectional uh, spinal cord, meaning that when you take a spinal cord and you cut it in half, that you could actually name the parts. You have some idea of how this spinal cord works. Okay, that's the basic just. More spinal cord information will come in the following term. All right, so those are details. The last one is mechanisms for injuries. So every structure, based on how it looks anatomically, um, will have a weakness, right? And so based on that weakness, it's more likely to be injured that way. And we'll talk about those. So it's a mechanism of injury based on anatomical structure. All right, and here's an example of that. So which of the following movements would occur in the sagittal plane? And then it lists a number of different movements at different joints. So there, that will give you their, your terminology that's specific to now planes of motion. And that's one of the first things we'll do. So in like a week, you'll know the answer to that. That's exciting, right? Okay. Um, one of our last learning objectives, we used to have a couple of more. We talked about applying things to clinical scenarios. But here's the difference. When you apply something to a clinical scenario, you know what you get to use? Your external brain. So you no longer have to have it all inside this brain because the focus of this is on how you apply. Can, do you have the skills to read a clinical problem and dissect it and then come up with the answer, not because you did or didn't remember the little piece of anatomy, but because you understood the problem solving, okay? So in that case, you can pull out your external brain and you can look up all the details as long as you put them in there. And as long as you know how to access them, you can use that knowledge, okay? So that's how we'll kind of differentiate the, each test. We'll have some parts of the test that are closed book and you'll have another part of the test that's open book. And the open book is the only place that you'll see clinical scenarios. Make sense? Okay. Um, here is an example. I know it's, the text is getting small, so I'll read this. So, an injured worker comes to you for an assessment of their shoulder. Upon assessment, you notice that active abduction is weak and painful, passive horizontal adduction is painful, and resisted abduction is quite weak and very painful. So which of the following could be injured based on this information? Okay, and then it gives you a list of different structures. And you will have the skills to know what each of those structures are, where they're located, what their function is, and you'll have the skills to dissect that question and say, well, wait a minute, what is that movement and what muscle causes that movement? And what does it mean if something's weak or painful? This year, actually, we have an exciting new tool to help us with this. For the last year, I've been working with interactive media um, in the library, and they've helped me to create an online interactive tool for you to use that is all about how to take clinical information and apply it. And so you don't have to rely just on me being able to help you to understand that. There's a, it's, a, it's a, at least an hour long 
simulation that you walk through with clinicians and patients that go through this. So that's pretty exciting. It's like just about ready. There might still be some bugs in it. And again, we've been working on it for a year, so it's a, a big project, but I'm hoping that you'll get a big benefit from it, even if it has a couple of little bugs for us to jump hoops through, okay? All right. Now, I think this is your last learning object, and this is, again, a bit of an unusual part of this class. Um, you will have the opportunity to talk to your peers about your test answers, and you will have the opportunity to then decide, is your answer correct or is their answer correct? And hopefully, you'll be using some problem-solving skills, and you won't just say, oh, yeah, they're right, because I'm not right. Right? Ideally, you'll say, well, why would they think that? And you'll debate it out with them. And actually, I really enjoy this part of the exam because it's really loud in the classroom. So, um, so th this will be a unique part, but the goal is that you can judge because you know what? All the rest of your career, you're going to have some piece of knowledge and someone else is going to say, no, it's this. Right? And then you've got to decide, well, am I right or are they right? How do you figure that out? Right? <laughs> Every time you read a new website and you see some information, you have to decide, well, I thought it was this. Do I just believe them because they told me? So I really think that's an important skill for you to develop, and you'll have the opportunity to do lots of developing with that. Because you know, when there's a test and grades on the line, people somehow get really motivated to figure out what is the truth. So, um, so uh, that's a fun part. So that's a bit unusual, but we'll call that the group exam. Okay, that you'll have an opportunity to do.